I'm happy to let you know that Brilliant is sponsoring this video. So here's a statement that you use pretty much all the time in your Calculus 1 class, which says, if the derivative of a function is always positive, then the function is strictly increasing. It's a very nice statement, but have you ever seen the proof of this? And no, I'm not talking about just look at the picture. I know, look at the picture is nice, but here I'm talking about a mathematical proof. Hmm, but well, don't worry. If you haven't seen a proof of this, well, that's what we are going to do in this video. First thing first, we will have to know what makes a function strictly increasing. Right here, recall that a function is strictly increasing, let's say on R, it means the following. For any two elements of R, let's say x1 and x2, if x1 is less than x2, then f of x1 is less than f of x2. In another word, the bigger the input, the bigger the output. Now, let's see how we are going to write a proof of this. Firstly, we are going to write down PF. And you always want to start with the, like the first part of the definition, like what we have. So I'm just going to start off by saying, let's say we have two elements of R. Let's say A and B. The A and B being elements of the set of real numbers with the condition that let's say A is the smaller element, A is less than B. Now, once we have this, Keep in mind, this is what we want to show WTS. The bigger the output, sorry, the bigger the input, the bigger the output. So we want f of a to be less than f of b. Okay. Now, this is all good, this is all nice. If you write this down on your final exam, you can pretty much get like one point out of like five or ten points, I don't know, but yeah. It's a good start. Now, how do we really continue though? That's the main question. Here's a hint. Go back to the original statement and look for the conditions. We have f is a differentiable function on R. f is differentiable. And right here we are talking about f of a and f of b, right? The value of the functions. And of course, I'm using a and b on purpose because this right here should remind you of the mean value theorem. It's a very common and very useful theorem in your Calculus 1 class. But again, the key is when you have a differentiable function and if you want to argue things with the value of the function, keep the mean value theorem in mind. But before we can actually write down the formula part, we will have to write down the following. Here, we know that f is differ differentiable on R. So let me just say f is dable on R, this implies the following. If a function is differentiable, well, it has to be continuous. But what we really need to mention is f is continuous on the interval AB, that's all we care. And when you mention the continuity because you want to use the mean value theorem, you are going to include the endpoints right here. And the other thing that you have to mention is that f is dable on a b. And of course, if f is dable on the whole real line, it has to be dable on a b. And when you want to mention the when you mention the differentiability because you want to use the mean value theorem for a b right here, you don't have to include the endpoints. That's just the uh, things you have to mention before you can use the mean value theorem. Now, here's the deal. By the mean value theorem, and I'm just going to write down the following. We know that there exists, I'm going to look at write it down in words. There exists, of course you can also write down the backwards E, but that doesn't really matter. There exists some number C, inside of this interval, right, AB, so I'll just say there is 6C, such that C is in between of A and B. And here's the formula part that you pretty much have to know in terms of doing the computation all the time, right? But this is what you are going to do when you are trying to write a proof. It's pretty much the slope of the line connecting the endpoints. 
So it's f of b minus f of a over b minus a. It's like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The slope of the line connecting the endpoints is equal to the derivative at c. It's the slope of the secant line being equal to the slope of the tangent line. And in order for this to be true, make sure you do mention this and that. Now, let's go back a little bit. This is the intuition of why we should be using the mean Fourier theorem. Again, f is differentiable because here you have the derivative. And then more precisely, we are talking about the value of the functions. So mean Fourier theorem is a great choice. Now, another thing that we haven't used is f prime of x is greater than zero for all x, right? So I'll just say since the derivative is always greater than zero for all x, well, we must have f prime of c being greater than zero. Okay, so f of b minus f of a over b minus a is greater than zero because connecting this and that together. And this right here actually implies f of b minus f of a is greater than zero. Why? Well, go back to this inequality here. Since a is less than b. So b minus a is positive. So when you multiply this to both sides, the top, it has to be bigger than zero. And of course, once we have this, have a look, just bring that to the other side. f of b is greater than f of a. Aha, as you can see, the bigger the input, the bigger the output. And that's exactly what we needed to show. Go ahead, put a box and shade it in. And that's it. So did you know about the proof that we just did? If you didn't, then I think something's missing. Because learning math is not just about learning the computations. We should also know why our things are true. And that's the beauty about learning mathematics. And I'm happy to tell you about our sponsor today, Brilliant.Work, because they also share the same principle. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and more. What I love most is how it forces you to think. You are not just passive reading or watching. You are solving real problems step by step. And that's how real learning should be. Personally, I like Brilliant because it reminds me how I learned math growing up by playing around with ideas and struggling a little until I really got it. It's that kind of hands-on thinking that helped me become a better problem solver and I see the same effect when I recommend it to my students. And if you're working on algebra or calculus, their courses are especially strong Everything is built up to help you really understand. Now, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Go ahead and visit the link brilliant.work slash blackpenrepen or scan the QR code on screen or you can also click on the link in the description. When you do that, you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So go ahead and check them out. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. I also want to thank you guys for checking them out.